This is the one thing that lowers blood sugar faster than anything else. It's simple, it's safe, and it works for type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and pre-diabetes. So the most important thing you can do to bring down your blood sugar is to make your body more sensitive to insulin. And I'm going to give you seven tips to help you do that. But first of all, what do I mean by making your body more sensitive to insulin? Let me explain. When you eat foods like bread, like potatoes, like rice, these eventually end up in your blood as blood sugar or blood glucose. And your blood sugar goes up. When your blood sugar goes up, your body produces a chemical called insulin. And insulin basically travels around the body, knocking on doors, asking your cells to open up and grab this sugar and take it out of the blood. If the cells open their doors, then the sugar can leave your blood and go into the cells. So your blood sugar comes down. When this happens the way it's supposed to, that means that your body is listening to insulin. It's sensitive to insulin. But if insulin knocks on the door and talks to your cells and they refuse to open up, that means they've stopped listening to insulin. They've become stubborn. They've become insulin resistant. So the sugar stays in your blood and your blood sugar goes higher and higher. So what happens if you're insulin resistant? If you have type 2 diabetes, then your body will keep fighting to produce more and more insulin, trying to get your blood sugar to come down. Eventually, it won't be able to make enough and you might have to start injecting yourself with insulin. If you have type 1 diabetes, your body doesn't make insulin, but you would need to inject more and more insulin to control your blood sugar. If you have pre-diabetes, then you could progress to full-blown type 2 diabetes. So you don't want to be insulin resistant, you want to be insulin sensitive. And how do you make your body more sensitive to insulin? Here are seven tips to help you do that. My first tip is about salt, and it's not what you think. Did you know that not eating enough salt could make your body insulin resistant? This might go against what you've been hearing for years because we've always been told that we're all eating too much salt. And actually, yes, if you're eating a lot of food that comes in boxes and cartons, you know, cookies and snacks and bread and all these processed foods, you might actually be eating a lot of salt because they load these foods, in quotes, with salt, with flavor enhancers, with artificial sweeteners, with hidden sugars. Why? Because they want you to become addicted to these foods. So you keep coming back to buy them again and again, and they make more money. But if you cook at home, then you can add as much salt as you need to make your food tasty without eating too much salt. And again, if you're eating a diet that's low in starchy foods like rice, like potatoes, like bread, a low carbohydrate diet, you might actually need to eat more salt. That's the way I eat most of the time. And I find that if I don't get enough salt, I have very, very bad leg cramps. So I sometimes put a few pinches of salt in my morning coffee. So that's tip number seven to help you become more insulin sensitive. Make sure you're eating enough salt. You might find it hard to believe, but getting good quality sleep at night can make you more insulin sensitive and bring down your blood sugar. And what do I mean by good quality sleep? Good quality sleep involves several things. You should be going to bed before 10.30 at night. You should sleep long enough to feel rested when you wake up. I usually sleep six to seven hours each night. Everybody's different, so you might need more than that. And you need to get enough really deep sleep. There's no point sleeping for 10 hours if you're waking up every 30 minutes or if you're tossing and turning the whole night. That's not good quality sleep. There are certain jobs that your body can't do until you go into really deep sleep. Just one night of bad quality sleep is enough to make you insulin resistant and raise your blood sugar the next day. So here are a couple of things you can do to improve your sleep. Most people have never heard of this, but it's so ridiculously easy to do. If you want to sleep well at night, start your day by getting some early morning sunlight into your eyes. Spending just 10 minutes outside after sunrise tells your brain that it should automatically start getting ready to sleep in 12 hours. I do this religiously every single day and it has helped me a lot. 
Don't drink coffee or anything that contains caffeine after 12 noon. A lot of soft drinks, energy drinks, and even the sugar-free ones contain caffeine. Tea contains caffeine as well. So if you drink a lot of tea, you might try the white tea or green tea, which have less caffeine than black tea. Turn down or dim the lights at home at least two hours before bedtime. You can also turn down the brightness on your phone or your computer if you need to use them at night. When it's time to sleep, make your bedroom as dark as possible. You can get some very dark, heavy blinds, curtains, but guess what? You can get the same effect with less trouble for less money by just using a sleep mask. And that's what I do. I've got lots of them. <laughs> so tip number six to make your body more sensitive to insulin, get good quality sleep. This next tip is closely related to the last one. Believe it or not, a little bit of stress occasionally is actually a good thing. The problem comes when you're under pressure all the time. Your body thinks you're in danger, so it keeps releasing the hormone cortisol. And what does cortisol do? Cortisol makes sure that you have lots of sugar in your blood so that you can use it for energy when there's an emergency. But there's no emergency, you're just stressed. Lots of cortisol also makes you store fat in your tummy and this tummy fat actually makes you more insulin resistant. So to reduce the effects of this long-term stress, you can do five to 10 minutes of deep breathing. You just spread it out throughout your day. You can meditate, you can pray. You can go for walks in nature where you have lots of grass and trees. And also watching less news on TV can actually help reduce your stress. So that's tip number five to increase your insulin sensitivity. Relax. For this next tip, you probably already know that you should be avoiding sugar, but these artificial sweeteners that they have in things like Diet Coke and all these other sugar-free drinks, you should try as much as possible to avoid them as well. And then people might tell you, oh, you can use some all natural alternatives to regular sugar, like date sugar, date sugar is sugar coconut sugar is still sugar honey is sugar and then there are the more exotic alternatives like agave nectar if you use these in large quantities they're going to stop your liver from working the way that it should and if you want to be insulin sensitive your liver has to be healthy so you can use a bit of stevia monk fruit erythritol allulose so that was tip number four be careful with artificial and even some of the natural sweeteners and sugar alternatives. Beer contains carbohydrates. So you might say to yourself, hmm, okay, I won't drink beer. Instead, I'll drink spirits like cognac and whiskey and vodka. They won't raise my blood sugar. But it's not always about what raises your blood sugar right now. Alcohol damages your liver the same way that sugar does. So your blood sugar doesn't rise immediately, you become more insulin resistant and your blood sugar rises later. So if you have problems with your blood sugar, with your blood pressure, with high cholesterol, with your weight, avoid alcohol. The next tip is about movement, about exercise. And I'm sure you're going to say you've heard it all before, but just hang on because I'm going to tell you some things that most people aren't talking about. So from the age of 30, you start losing your muscle. Yes, your muscles start shrinking. And the older you are, the faster they shrink. The problem with this is that your muscles use up more glucose, more sugar than any other part of your body. So the more muscle you have, the easier it is to clear sugar from your blood. And the great thing about your muscles is that when you're using them, they can clear sugar from your blood without insulin. So first of all, you need to hold on to as much of your muscle as you can. So at the barest minimum, you should be doing some kind of exercise, some kind of movement for at least 30 minutes every day. Especially if you're just starting out, choose something that's easy, something that you enjoy, that you don't have to think about too much. Sometimes I just take this, my kettlebell, and I swing it for 30 minutes outside while I'm getting my early morning sunlight. Sometimes I bounce around on my trampoline for 30 minutes. Those are some no-brainer things that I don't have to think about. So you just find what works for you. The next step up is to build back some of that muscle that you've lost. 
And the way to do this is to lift heavy things, challenge your muscles. And you should do this about three times a week. I have these dumbbells that I use at home. I don't go to the gym. Each one is 10 kilograms. That's what, about 22 pounds. So that was tip number two to become more insulin sensitive. Use your muscles and build more muscle. And this next tip is one of the most important on this list. I find it so frustrating when someone tells me I was advised to eat six meals a day to control my blood sugar. Please stop eating all the time. Eat for part of the day and for the rest of the day, don't eat. That is intermittent fasting. And to find out everything you need to know about how to use intermittent fasting to increase your insulin sensitivity and bring down your blood sugar, watch this next video.